Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about these unusual and very mysterious objects known as Super Jupiters. And also a few studies that discover something about them that we never really thought was possible. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So there are quite a lot of really interesting studies about these objects, mostly because Super Jupiters or Hot Jupiters or anything that's related to Jupiter is usually really massive, really easy to see. And for the most part, all of these planets also have properties that are just not present in any object in our own solar system. Basically, these are really strange objects and whatever we discover about them normally surprises us. The paper I'm going to be talking about today is no different. It's something that just is kind of shocking. So um, there's actually at least one other paper I've recently read that talked about how one of the possible reasons why hot Jupiters are not present around our own sun is because for the most part these objects only exist in very young stars. In other words, young stars seem to possess them, old stars seem not to. And the explanation was that it's very likely that for the most part, these objects just kind of eventually end up inside the stars. So it's quite possible that our sun once upon a time had one of these super Jupiters or hot Jupiters, but then it just kind of fell into our sun and is no longer there. We don't know if this actually happened, but this is what they observed around other stars. But that's not really the study I wanted to talk about today. The study I wanted to mention comes from my alma mater, from the university where I graduated, although from researchers I've uh, never really met because I think I was already gone from the university when they started working there. And the discovery they made was in regards to temperatures of hot Jupiters. Well, obviously the title itself, hot Jupiter, should be given, right? They're hot. And we, we've known that for a very long time. But there are several techniques that allow us to determine how hot. One of these techniques is by literally looking at the uh, heat reflection of the object and then by trying to see um, the amount of infrared radiation we get from it. And so by looking at several of these very hot Jupiters, these exoplanets that orbit around their parent stars, and then by specifically seeing the amount of energy that they emit from the dark side and also from the bright side, the scientists behind this paper discovered something unusual about the dark side. Well, first of all, we know for a fact that all of these planets, these hot Jupiters, planets that are very close to their parent star, they're all tidally locked. They're always facing with one side toward the star, and with the other side, uh, they're always facing the darkness of space. So um, I guess what we were curious about is, first of all, is the temperature here on the dark side also really high? Or is it going to be really low? And how is it going to be different from one planet to another? Surprisingly, what the scientists from McGill University discovered after looking at all of these um, hot Jupiters you see on the list here, is that even though they all have a very different daytime temperature from one being roughly around a thousand degrees Celsius with the hottest one being somewhere here, WASP-33b. That's the object we have here. And this here is, I think it says uh, just over 2000 or 2200 degrees Celsius. So even though the day side um, corresponded to the distance from the star, the night side didn't. For the most part, for all of these planets they looked at, the dark side temperatures were relatively similar to one another, and that is very unusual. So let's just try to visualize this. Here we have a random star, in this case I just picked Sirius because it's a very hot star, and then we have five different Jupiters orbiting around it. These are now hot Jupiters because they're so close to the star. So the closest one here, the hottest one, its temperature is 2800 degrees Celsius, but that's of course on the bright side here. Then the second one is obviously going to be a little bit cooler, the third one is going to be even cooler, and the uh, farthest one is going to be the coolest. And here the temperature is about 1200 degrees Celsius. So there's a huge difference in temperature, but it is somewhat predictable and linear depending on the distance from the star. So hottest, less hot, less hot, less hot, coolest. But that's not how it works for the night side apparently. For every single one of hot Jupiters, the temperature, even for the closest one, was about 800 or so degrees Celsius. 
the coldest one was also 800 degrees Celsius. So all of the night sites had a somewhat unusually close temperature to one another. Now you can see that they're not all super accurate, some of them have a lot of margin of error, but if you were to draw a line in between them, a line at around 800 degrees Celsius would cross all of these objects, suggesting that that's kind of where the temperature is. And well, we don't really understand why yet, we don't really know why exactly is it that the temperature of the night site for all of these objects is the same, but it seems to be the case for all of the objects they've investigated. And one of the explanations is actually really interesting. The suggestion here is that even though the atmosphere um, of these objects circulates quite dramatically around the planet, it doesn't really transfer the heat to the night side to the point where it becomes super hot. But it is hot enough to create a very special type of a cloud that we might be observing. We're basically observing these super, super hot clouds of rock, different types of manganese sulfides and different types of silicates. In other words, basically the entire night side of these planets is formed by these unusual clouds of rocks, rocky clouds, silicate clouds. So essentially rocks and minerals form the uh, night side of the planet, but not in the solid type of a rock, but more of a cloudy vapor-like formation, very similar to what you would see coming out of a volcano, for example. Although technically that's not even the right comparison because it would be extremely difficult to imagine this. This is something that we just don't have in our solar system and we can only simulate this in a very specific condition in a lab. But even then it would be really difficult. But rocky clouds is not really a surprise to us. Back in 2013 there was another study that talked about Kepler-7b that you see right here that may also have very similar formations on its surface, and this is what it kind of looks like simulated in NASA's eyes by NASA itself. So this right here is what these unusual rocky silicate clouds may look like if looked at uh, from a distance. Except that in this case, uh, the planet has them on the bright side, but in the case of the Super Jupiters we've just looked at, this is probably what the night side looks like. In other words, it seems that pretty much all of the hot Jupiters may have these unusual formations on the night side that resemble this right here. This is compared to our own Jupiter. Now, we're not sure if this actually applies to all of the hot Jupiters because we've only taken a look at the ones in this study, but I'm sure the follow-up studies will once and for all determine what's really happening here and possibly even provide a more thorough explanation as to why these clouds form in such a way and create such conditions on these planets where the night side temperature seems to be basically the same. I'm sure there will be some exceptions to this rule, but for now it's a pretty interesting and pretty unusual discovery and teaches us a little bit more about these unusual objects that don't exist in the solar system, but I really want to actually know what happens to the ones that may have existed in our solar system. But in some of the future videos we'll explore this in more detail and I'll talk about other studies that talk about these unusual hot Jupiters and other planets known as super Jupiters in a little bit more detail. For now, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Check out the study in the description below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves space and sciences. And come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does actually help me quite a lot. Bye.